Hello, my name's Andy Darren from Race Technology and uh, this video is just a quick introduction into the Dash 2 configuration software. So it's not intended as a, a full tutorial on how to use the software, I just want to introduce some of the capabilities that we've recently introduced. So if you're watching this video, I guess you're familiar with the, the Dash 2 product, which we've been manufacturing for a number of years. So this is it. Uh, it's a completely uh, self-contained road legal and race dashboard. So it's in a die-cast housing, shift lights across the top, it's got a large area LCD which is backlit, so it's fine for nighttime use. On the back we've got two military spec connectors which carry all the I.O. And on this particular unit we have uh, input for four analog sensors, a uh, wheel speed sensor, uh, and it can be used standalone, so just as a completely self-contained uh, complete road legal dashboard or alternatively you can connect it to a data logger or an ECU adapter or any any other of our products basically everything's compatible so that's the unit and as I say I just want to introduce the uh, configuration software and just show you some of the uh, some, show you some of the options on there so uh, this is the, um, the software which I'm going to be operating here and this is uh, I've just started up I haven't done any configuration at all um, so if we look at the analog inputs as a, as a first thing, so if I click on that option there. So as I say, on this unit we have uh, four independent analog inputs and they can either be configured to use our sensors, so race technology sensors, in which case it makes the configuration much more straightforward. Alternatively, if there's already sensors connected to your engine, so a, a very typical example would be you already have a water temperature sensor, then it can be calibrated to use your own analog sensors. So if you look at the options here, so in this case all four are enabled. Um, if we look at this uh, drop down list here, we can either select a standard sensor, so these are our standard set sensors which are available from our website, or alternatively, if we go to the bottom, we can select a custom sensor. So, for example, if we select a one wire custom sensor, then we can click on the setup button to configure that. And in this case, it gives us some instructions on how to connect the sensor up, and we're able to enter uh, a voltage and, for example, a temperature into the, uh, into the table, and that then will be set up for your particular sensor. So if you're using your own sensors, that's a necessary extra step. If you're using a race technology sensor, that's not needed. You simply select which sensor you've got from the, uh, the drop-down list. Okay, so that's the analog inputs. Okay, close that window. Um, the next option, which is very popular, is for setting up the ECU connection. So on the Dash 2, if you're required to connect to a, uh, an aftermarket ECU, so GEMS, DTA uh, and so on, then you use an external adapter and we supply lots of external adapters so we can pretty much cater with any aftermarket ECU. So we select on here which uh, ECU adapter has been attached. So this is some of them here, like I say, we've got DTA, Ultronic, Emerald, Life, well, it's quite a long list, I'm not reading them all now. So if we just pick uh, one of those, so in this case let's pick the Omex 600, which is a very popular unit, and then we can select which variables we want to get from the ECU adapter. So for example, we might choose to take RPM, air temperature, water temperature, and boost pressure. So once we've selected those on there, then the Dash 2 is aware that those, uh, those variables are available and you'll be able to select those variables for display on the screen. Okay, we'll close that screen. Okay, it's just giving us a warning that we've got RPM from two sources there. So in fact, I'll just cancel that screen for now. Um, for more advanced uh, installations, we can also specify other data sources. So, for example, we might have connected an analog 8, which is an analog expansion module, or we might have connected a DL1 uh, data logger. So I'll just leave that disabled for now, but they're all options. Uh, the next one is the RPM input. So uh, in this case, we can either set to take uh, RPM as a digital input directly to the back of the dashboard, 
So in the case that you're running a standard ECU, um, so you don't have a data output, um, then normally you would take a, a feed from the engine. Um, so if it's fuel injected, you can normally just take a signal directly from the fuel injector. Um, alternatively, there may well be a sensor already attached on the engine where you can get a, an RPM signal from. Um, as an alternative, it quite often comes from an aftermarket ECU. Uh, we can also set up various filtering and, and other parameters on there. That's okay. Um, we have uh, control inputs. So, um, the Dash 2 is normally installed with four buttons, so we ha normally have uh, up, down, select and menu. And we can also set those buttons up to have particular um, additional features. So if you're connected to a DACE log, for example, you can set one of those buttons up to start and stop logging. Or again, if you've got an external logger, you can set up a, another button selection to add a lap marker while you're actually on the track. That's what that uh, unit control inputs is about. For many installations, it's not required to do anything, anything with that at all. Okay. Um, this is the wheel speed input. So there's two alternatives for the, um, for the uh, speed display on this. We can either get it from the GPS if we have a data logger attached, but if we're using it as a completely standalone dashboard, then we connect it up to a wheel speed sensor. And the wheel speed sensor is a little magnetic sensor and it po points at a, a moving bolt or a, a small piece of metal that rotates with wheel speed. So quite a common option, for example, is to look at the bolts on the back of a brake disc and detect those passing by. So what we do have to do with the Dash 2 is tell it how many pulses we get per kilometre or per mile. And um, there's various tools in there to allow you to do that. So I'll not go through them, but for example, you can tell it what size tyres you have and the differential ratio and so on. It will work it out for you. Or you can just uh, enter the number of pulses directly. Uh, the next one is the RPM scale, so if I click on there. So around the top of the, the Dash 2 Pro we have a very large RPM scale. Um, and obviously the RPM scale that you want on there very much depends on the vehicle. So for example for a, um, a V8 engine maybe the red line is at 8000 RPM, but for a motorcycle engine powered vehicle maybe the, uh, maybe the red line is 14000 RPM. So, and we can also set up a very non-linear scale, so for example, you might want the first uh, section to be 0 to 3000 RPM and then stretch out the rest of the scale from 3000 RPM up to 10,000 RPM. But anyway, the exact scale on the RPM um, on, on the bar graph there is completely configurable to, uh, to the user's requirements. Okay, I'll just close that window. Um, Similarly, we also have shift lights across the top and they can be configured. Um, and again, it very much depends on the application. So typically, um, the lights come on one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they all flash to indicate a, a gear, ch uh, gear change is required. Uh, that's, uh, okay, close that one. Um, next one is the, um, the gear indicator. So at the top of the, the dash to we have a, a very large gear indicator, which is particularly useful for a, a sequential um, motorcycle box, but it's, it's always a, a useful indicator. And there's a few ways that can be controlled. First of all, we can hide it altogether if you don't require it. Um, alternatively, if you've got a built-in gearbox sensor, which is quite common on the sequential ones, but not on, a, uh, on an H-pattern box. But if you have a sensor built in with a voltage output, then we can use that voltage to control that display. A more common option is that we set the Dash 2 up to calculate the, uh, which gear we're in using a combination of the wheel speed and the RPM. So in that case, we tell the Dash 2 Pro what the gear ratios are, and then it can work out what gear you're in, and it can display it that way. Okay, so what's in the, uh, close that window there. So the, the next one is one of the, the most important. Um, so this screen allows us to set up what parameters, what variables we display on the screen. So on the Dash 2, we have three main display areas. So one, two, three across the screen, and one slightly larger than the other two. And we also have up to five different screens of information. So we can control which screen we're displaying with the up and down buttons. 
Um, so that gives a total of 15 different parameters we can display, which is plenty for, for most applications. So for example, um, uh, we might have oil pressure as the large display being very important. We can have um, water, uh, water temperature and oil temperature or any other combination. We can have fuel, boost pressure, whatever you like on there. So this screen allows us to configure that and we can also control uh, how quickly it updates. So for example, with boost pressure, you probably want it to update very quickly. Whereas with fuel level, you probably want to update more slowly with lots of filtering just to uh, remove the effects of uh, the fuel moving around in the tank and sending the sensor up and down. So you can effectively add electronic damping to the, uh, to the display. And there's other things we can control in there like the number of decimal places we display and also the label as it's shown above the, uh, the variable. Okay, so if we close that one. Next one is only for use if you've got also a data logger uh, attached to the dash too. So if you have a data logger attached, then you're also able to display lap timing. Um, and this uh, option here allows you to control exactly what is displayed. So for example, we can display uh, the lap time, the sector time, or the delta times, which is how much faster or slower you are this time compared to your best lap sector. Uh, and we can also control how long that's displayed for. And the last one, but very important, we can also set up alarms on all variables. So as well as displaying just a display of a particular variable, so for example, we can display on there um, water temperature. For each channel, we can also have an alarm. So for example, we might want to have an alarm when water temperature goes above 95 degrees C, or alternatively, you might want to set up an alarm when the fuel level goes below five liters. So we can set up those alarms and we can have uh, various filtering and different options and how quickly it displays. So again, with a fuel level, you might only want to display when it goes below five liters for let's say uh, 10 seconds, or you might only want to display a uh, water temperature warning when it's been above the threshold for a few seconds. Okay, so that's the last option on there. So once we've set up the software, then we simply attach the Dash 2 Pro to the PC and we can send the configuration. We can then check it's all okay. Um, and if there's any issues, we can either download the configuration back from the dashboard into the software, or we can bring up the last configuration, make some alterations, send it back up and check it again. Okay, well, that was a quick introduction to the software. I hope that gave you some idea of the capabilities of the unit. Thank you very much for watching.